The Master is one of the Doctor's greatest foes. A fellow Time Lord who was once his closest friend on Gallifrey. But as both Time Lords grew older, the Master took a different path than the Doctor. A path of insanity, jealousy and evil. The Master's lives are far less documented than the Doctor's, so today, in the first episode of our brand new series here on the channel, we're gonna explore the story of the Master. The Master grew up on Gallifrey, but as he referenced in the end of time, you couldn't call it childhood, but more a life of duty. Like his fellow Time Lords, the Master was taken from his family when he was only eight years old for the selection process. Here, he was forced to stare into the intempered schism, a gap in the fabric of reality. This is where the Master's insanity began, as the never-ending drumbeat, which would later be found out to be the heartbeat of a Time Lord, began to manifest itself within his mind, plaguing him for his entire life. The Master and the Doctor's friendship first began on their first day at the Academy, with them both being tutored by Barusa. Some sources claim that they both made friends with the War Chief too. Their friendship grew stronger as the pair grew older. The Master and the Doctor have both referenced themselves to have been inseparable, sharing similar interests and creating a pact that they would explore every star in the universe together. During their childhood, they would play together in the pastures of red grass near Mount Perdaton, not far from the capital. The Master taught the Doctor the power of hypnotism, and they'd hypnotise people as pranks. But it wasn't all fun and games when they were younger. They were both bullied by a boy called Torvik, and this led to the Doctor being forced to kill the bully in order to save the Master's life. This was the first time that their friendship had become complicated. As they found their footing within the Academy, the Doctor and the Master then went on to choose their respective titles. The Master felt that the Doctor's title was sanctimonious, whereas the Doctor thought that the Master's title was arrogant and a psychologist's field day. This was the first time that they showed different intentions and outlooks on their lives in their futures. And this is when they both began to diverge into two completely different directions. Their friendship began to fall apart as they progressed through the Academy. The Master didn't perform as well as the Doctor did, with the Doctor being Barusa's more favoured student. Despite earning a higher degree in cosmic science than the Doctor did, the Doctor's grades overall were higher than the Master's, and this was believed to have been what planted the seeds of the Master's jealousy and envy towards his best friend. When the Doctor decided to flee Gallifrey, the Master anxiously went looking for his friend in an attempt to find him. He used the node which he'd gave to Susan Pryor in order to locate the Doctor. This helped him establish a connection with Nyssa, the fifth Doctor's eventual companion. And, desperate to find the Doctor, the Master tried to control Nyssa, only for the Doctor to intervene and stop him. The Master wasn't done there though. He then tried kidnapping a CIA agent named Maris in an attempt to find the Doctor once again, which ultimately failed too, before trying to get help from the Rani, which also came to no avail. The Master did eventually leave Gallifrey, taking things into his own hands as he stole a Type 45 TARDIS. Shortly after he fled though, his TARDIS began to break down, so he was forced to settle on a planet named Destination. Later, he'd take this planet over as his own, being revered as a hero. So when the First Doctor eventually arrived on the planet, the Master tried to steal his TARDIS by tricking Ian and Barbara in the process. But fortunately, they overpowered the Master, leaving him trapped there with no means of escape. Now it's unknown in the earlier years how many times the Master did regenerate. The Seventh Doctor did reference once that the Master would use regeneration as a disguise during his many different evil exploits. 
but he eventually regenerated into the body which we first seen in the Terror of the Autons, where he fled back to Gallifrey and gained access to the Matrix. He used this to gather classified information for his future plans, including files on the Doomsday Weapon, the Sea Devils, the Chronovores, and the Daemons. Due to this, the Master was originally imprisoned on Sharda by the Time Lords, but following the Doctor's exile to Earth in the War Games, the Time Lords wanted someone to keep an eye on the Doctor and keep him busy, so they released the Master and they sent him to Earth. The Master inevitably did do what they asked. He kept the Doctor busy during an attempted invasion of Earth, alongside the Nestine in the Terror of the Autons, as well as trying to trigger a nuclear war in the Mind of Evil. But despite being defeated time and time again by the Doctor, the Master did regain something, his dematerialization circuit. This allowed him to leave Earth and travel freely throughout the universe, with the Doctor remaining in exile. Now there are a number of different accounts theorising how the Master's 12th incarnation came to his demise, but the decayed and dying Master did eventually encounter a future version of himself, being Alex McQueen's Master. They both plotted to use the Anomaly Cage to remake reality in their own image, before being stopped by the Seventh Doctor, who erased the events from the two Masters' memories and returning them back to their normal timelines. The decayed Master was eventually sent back to Gallifrey by Goth. Here, the Master turned Goth into his slave, taking over the Matrix once more. He believed he could use the Sash of Rassilon as his protection, while channeling the energy from the Eye of Harmony to renew himself. The Fourth Doctor was then lured to Gallifrey by the Master in an attempt to prevent the murder of the Lord President, which then led to the Doctor being framed, putting him on trial for the President's murder. Following Goth's death, the Master lost out to the Doctor once again, falling into a crevice created by a localised earthquake, but luckily for the Master, he gained access to his TARDIS among all the commotion and escaped once again. The decayed master then tried to follow the Doctor outside of Gallifrey, but he was knocked off course when his TARDIS crash landed in London during the 1890s. He quickly encountered two of the Doctor's friends being Jago and Lightfoot. He planned to poison them in order to lure the Doctor back to Earth so he could save them. This did work, it did lure the Doctor back to Earth, but only at the master's expense. He tried to use a machine which would drain the life out of Jago and Lightfoot, as well as absorbing the Doctor's Artron energy so he could once again save himself from the brink of death. This backfired, and the Doctor reversed the flow, causing the Master's life to be drained instead. Despite this, as always, the Master somehow escaped again, but this time he was on the brink of death itself in his final form. The Master continued in his desperate attempts to keep on living. He tried stealing body after body, renewing his life form time and time again, but he still could not survive. He eventually found himself on Traken, where he devised a plan to use the Source to restore himself. He spent years within the Source before again his plans were thwarted by the Fourth Doctor. Despite this, the Master managed to merge his body with Nyssa's father, enabling himself to live on within Tremus's body. After escaping Traken, he encountered the Fourth Doctor time and time again. Throughout his life in Tremus's body, he witnessed the end of the Fourth Doctor's life, before being trapped on Castrovalva among many other adventures. The Master spent years going head to head with the Doctor, with his plans being foiled at every turn. But the tables were eventually turned, when the Master was ordered by the High Council to save not one Doctor, but five of them during the game of Rassilon. The Time Lords offered the Master a new set of regenerations and a second chance at life, as a bargaining tool to help the Doctor within the Death Zone. But despite proving his credentials to the High Council, the Master, realising there was an opportunity of immortality, turned on the Doctor and tried to kill him. This didn't work out as he was knocked out by the Brigadier. 
Rassilon then sent the Master back to his own time, reassuring him that his sins would find their punishment in due time. And that's exactly what they did. The Time Lords punished the Master by destroying his Trachonite body, reducing him to nothing but a helpless phantom before exiling him from Gallifrey. He luckily found his TARDIS, which allowed the Master to retain some sort of a level of physical form, as nothing but a shadowy figure. He tried to fake his own death, luring the Doctor to his funeral, so he could then steal one of the Doctor's remaining regenerations. But that plan fell apart too. So, in typical Master fashion, he decided to not steal a body from the Doctor, but one from his former selves. He confronted mental predictions of his past selves and managed to overpower them, gaining enough life energy from each of his past bodies, allowing him to regenerate back into his Trachonite body and somehow live on again. His desperation grew higher and higher, as he later attempted to interfere the Fifth Doctor's regeneration, urging him to die from Spectrox Toxemia. But the Master realised that he couldn't defeat the Doctor on his own. It was simply impossible and he needed to team up with an old friend. That friend was the Rani. In an attempt to take out the Sixth Doctor, the Master wanted to use the advancement of human technology and the Rani wanted the brain chemicals which would induce sleep in humans. Unfortunately for the both of them, they were trapped by the Doctor in the Rani's TARDIS, leaving them in harm's way of a Tyrannosaurus Rex due to a time spillage. The Master selfishly shone through once again as he freed himself from the TARDIS, leaving the Rani to drift helplessly through the vortex. The Master then found himself a greater threat than the Doctor, because while observing the Doctor's trial, he came to the realisation that the Valiard was a far greater threat to him than the Doctor. This led to the Master rescuing the Doctor and supplying him with surprise witnesses, being Melanie Bush and Sabalon Glitz. He then used Glitz to steal secrets from the Matrix, only to be defeated by the Valiard. He of course then escaped, as he always does, in his trusty TARDIS. Following further encounters with the Doctor and the Valiard, who vowed to deal with the Master and ensure that he left the Doctor alone for good, the Master went to the Cheetah World, where he took control of their people. But due to the exposure of the planet, he changed into one of them and was eventually trapped there. This was the last time we seen him in his Trachonite Master form. Now there are a number of different accounts based on how the Master escaped the Cheetah world, but he later found himself tried and executed by the Daleks on Skaro. His final request was for the Seventh Doctor to take his remains back to Gallifrey. Some say this was made via a telepathic contact between the pair or via some sort of Time Lord Dalek treaty. Nevertheless, the Master, as always, had one last trick up his sleeve. Unknown to the Doctor, using the Death Worm Morphant, the Master's physical being somehow lived on in the form of a fluid-like snake. And this moment is imperative, because it's believed that this survival of the Master broke a peace treaty created by President Romana and was one of the early trigger points which in turn caused the Time War. The Master then went on and escaped and stole a body just like he did back on Traken. He discovered, however, that Bruce's body, the paramedic whose body he'd stolen, was gradually deteriorating and that he'd eventually need to steal the Doctor's lives to continue living by opening the Eye of Harmony. This, of course, didn't work out, with the Master being sucked into the Eye of Harmony in the Doctor's TARDIS, seemingly being gone forever. And again, there are different accounts on how the Master survived this, including theories that he was pulled from the Vortex by a mythical creature, and that his mind was transferred into an android, or that he just lingered in the Time Vortex for hundreds of years. Now this is when, in his timeline, we believe Alex McQueen's master appears, in between Eric Roberts' master 
and the War Master, with numerous audio adventures including his previous encounter with the Decayed Master, as well as a time where he formed an alliance with the Dalek Controller in order to create a new Dalek army. This was foiled and the Master was left stranded in the midst of a dalek Centauran war as the actual Time War beckoned. In amongst his many different lives, jumping from one body to another and somehow staying alive, it is believed that the Master was finally killed by a creature called the Ravenous, a creature from the old times who fed on Time Lords. This, across most accounts, was the definitive death of the Master. But of course, with the Time War fast approaching and the Time Lords growing incredibly desperate, they chose to resurrect the Master in the belief that he would be the perfect warrior for a Time War. In the early days, the Master did play his part. He fought in the Battle of Ketol, helping the Time Lords in one of their earliest and most vital victories, but eventually he regenerated into what is believed his 16th incarnation, and that was in the body of a small child. This small child allied with the War Doctor with the idea of putting their turbulent past behind them and fighting for the greater good, being the Time Lords. He teamed up with the Doctor and the Squire, a companion of the War Doctors, during the period where the Cyclos allied themselves with the Daleks. Whilst on the planet of Galgoth, the Master encountered Alice Orbifoon, who had travelled in the Master's TARDIS from after the war in the future. But upon trying to fly his TARDIS, the Master caused a paradox, which resulted in his body regenerating anyway and into his 17th incarnation. This is believed to have been the dawn of the War Master. Throughout the War Master's life, he created his laser screwdriver, before having a number of different adventures. He became stranded in a parallel universe which was being invaded by the Cybermen. He used this opportunity to obtain technology and use it to repair his TARDIS. He then went on to assist Unit in defeating these Cybermen and then taking that energy so he could return to the Time War. Following this, he continued to fight, clashing with the Supreme Dalek, the Dalek Emperor, and even previous incarnations of himself. But this is when the Time War began to get really messy and really convoluted. The Master constructed a plan to try and create a better timeline, which would therefore end the war and make things easier for the Time Lords. But when this backfired, causing the paradigm to spin out of control, the Master had to witness the Time Lords and the Daleks win and lose battles that they'd previously fought over time and time again, altering the Time War and ultimately tipping it into the favour of the Daleks. The Master's plan to create a better war had failed and he'd made it a thousand times worse. He then witnessed the Dalek Emperor take control of the Cruciform, and this scared the Master into fleeing from the Time War full stop. He did use the paradigm to correct and observe a few more changes within the Time War, but the mess that he'd created got worse and worse the more he meddled with it. Scared of the outcome and tired of fighting, he fled to the end of the universe with the Chameleon Arc, which he'd acquired earlier in the conflict, eventually turning himself into a human baby, hidden away until the war had ended. Taking the name Yana, the Master grew old into a gentle, benevolent scientist who dedicated his life to helping the last of the humans reach Utopia. And as the project neared its completion, he encountered the Doctor once again, alongside Captain Jack and Martha Jones. The arrival of the Doctor and the TARDIS wasn't a good thing though, as references to the Daleks, time travel and regeneration started to trigger the Time Lord within Yana's subconscious. His past incarnations began to command him to look past the perception filter and open the fob watch, unleashing his true being once again. With the Master back in his body, he killed his assistant Chanthor, sabotaging the Utopia project before stealing the Doctor's TARDIS. 
This was of course not before he was fatally shot, just managing to escape. The master, then safely locked away in the Doctor's TARDIS, regenerated into his 18th incarnation before heading back to Earth, leaving the Doctor stranded at the end of the universe. Following the downfall of Harriet Jones in 2006, the Master established himself with a second life as the human Harold Saxon. He eventually became Prime Minister, he had a wife, a degree and an entire life on Earth and he had the human race brainwashed by him with the use of the Archangel Network and the drumbeat within his head. He travelled back to the end of the universe, agreeing to allow the Toclophane to escape and live a new life in the past via the Paradox Machine. He'd also become the driving force behind the creation of the Valiant and shot down the Rachnos on Christmas Day. He eventually took control of the planet by assassinating the US President and sending the world into panic under his new rule. For a whole year, he had the world under his hostage, utilising weapons with the intention of turning Earth into a warship. Little did he know that throughout that year, Martha Jones had been spreading the word of the Doctor using the Archangel Network. This brought the Doctor back to normality and frightened the Master into threatening him to say he was going to detonate the rockets by using the black hole converter. Of course, the Master deep down knew full well that this would kill him in the process and that his time in charge of the world was over. After being forgiven by the Doctor, it seemed like he would then be under the Doctor's care. That was until he was fatally shot by his wife. And as the Doctor cradled him in his arms, pleading for the Master to regenerate, he still had to have the last laugh, simply refusing and therefore causing what seemed to be his death for good. But of course, the Master had a backup plan once again, because on Christmas Eve 2009, the Disciples of Saxon resurrected him with the use of his former wife Lucy. She tried to use the portion of death in an attempt to prevent his resurrection, but it didn't work. The Master survived and he was back, but his body was dying. He then went on a mission to discover the origin of the drumbeat in his head and by using the Immortality Gate, he turned the entire human race into himself, which enabled the drumbeat in his head to triangulate its source, awaking in the Time Lords. The connection opened the time lock just enough for the Time Lords to escape the final days of the Time War and make Earth their new sanctuary. Even though he was responsible for helping the Time Lords escape, they didn't want to ally with the Master, calling him diseased and a disease of their own making. The Doctor managed to break the link and send the Time Lords back into the Time War, but in doing so, he'd seemingly written his own death sentence via the hands of Rassilon himself. That was until, like with the Valiard before, the Master realised that there was indeed a bigger threat than the Doctor once again. Using the last of his body, the Master saved the Doctor, taking him and the Time Lords back into the Time War, locked away forever. It is believed that the moment foreseen that the Time War would finally end and come to a conclusion with the regeneration of the Master and Rassilon. However, the Master was able to survive his encounter with Rassilon, choking the President with several white point stars. This led to Rassilon regenerating and the Master escaping. He had his condition with the drumbeat cured by the Time Lords and escaped by blowing up the War Room and fleeing Gallifrey in his TARDIS. After burning out his TARDIS's dematerialization circuit, the Master found himself eventually stranded on a Mondasian colony ship. So he decided to disguise himself as the character we saw known as Razor, while he oversaw what he called the Genesis of the Cybermen. 
During that time, he befriended the doctor's companion, Bill, who'd just been shot and killed and was ready to be converted into a Cyberman. After spending years studying the Doctor and his future incarnation, Missy, the Master had become worried over his future, seeing how Missy had eventually turned good. So he decided to push his plan forward and fully convert Bill. With his plan now in full motion, the Master decided to reveal his true identity to Missy and the two decided to team up against the Doctor. Seemingly in complete control, they didn't realise that the Doctor had altered the Cybermen's computer systems, turning them against any Time Lord. This forced both of the Masters to team up alongside the Doctor and fight off the Cybermen to escape. The Master later received the dematerialization circuit which he needed from his future self before heading back to his TARDIS to escape. Before he could though, he was stabbed in the back by Missy, causing him to stagger back to his TARDIS and regenerate. It is believed that after the Master reached his TARDIS, he did then regenerate straight into Missy, his 19th incarnation. It is believed that after the Master reached his TARDIS and regenerated into Missy, by being in the presence of her older self and the events of what had just happened with the regeneration, this caused Missy to not be able to recall any of the memories from the ship, with her timelines being out of sync. This is how she didn't remember regenerating from the Master into Missy. Following this, she encountered River Song. They were both brought to a prison at the Bechdel Institute where they were to check if an assassination attempt on the 11th Doctor had been successful. Once eventually escaping, Missy left in her TARDIS, transporting River back to Stormcage, not mentioning River's future, knowing how delicate her timeline would be. This interaction though did tempt Missy into interfering with the 11th Doctor's timeline, as she then instrumented a number of events that ensured that Clara Oswald would become the Doctor's next companion, distracting him so that Missy could use that to manipulate him further down the line. She gave Clara the Doctor's number and put the ad in the paper for them to meet up in deep breath. Somewhere along the line, Missy gained access to a Vortex Manipulator. This allowed her to found the 3W Institute, and in order to create the Nether Sphere, Missy required three Matrix Data Slices, which she could only acquire from a previous incarnation. So, Missy decided to meet up with her former wife, Lucy Saxon. She told Lucy about her future husband and about the events that were to come and that she would be the one to shoot the master dead when the time was right. Now she had the data slices, this allowed Missy to finally create the Nether Sphere, where she could upload dying minds, removing them of any emotion and re-downloading them into cyber converted bodies. She eventually revealed her plan and true identity to the 12th Doctor before kicking her cyber invasion into gear. Her plan, however, eventually fell apart. And using Missy's own weapon, Clara had decided that she would kill her. The Doctor, however, wouldn't allow this and surprisingly rather opted to kill the Master himself. Before he could fire the weapon, Missy, though, was seemingly shot by the Brigadier, who was resurrected as a Cyberman. Unknown to the Doctor, Missy had actually used the energy from the blast to recharge her Vortex Manipulator and escape the blast without a trace. Missy was later given the Doctor's confession dial, which she used to try and find the Doctor in search of answers. Unable to find him, however, she decided to get Clara and the Doctor's attention by freezing all the planes in the sky. Once Clara and Unit had agreed to work alongside Missy, they found the Doctor, only to be followed by Colony Sarf. This led to the three being taken to Scarrow, with Missy being held by the Daleks. She used her Vortex Manipulator to escape extermination, allowing her and Clara to escape the Dalek City. 
She then entered the Dalek sewers using a Dalek's casing to hide Clara. She then pretended that she was Clara's prisoner and together they helped rescue the Doctor as they fled the Dalek city when it was being destroyed. Even though she'd helped the Doctor escape, Missy still tried to trick the Doctor into killing Clara, who, unknown to the Doctor, was still in the Dalek casing. Because of this, Missy was left surrounded by Daleks, hinting at a potential alliance between the two. It is believed that Missy somehow managed to escape Scaro, encountering the Doctor and Clara once again, as well as a number of her former selves shortly after. Missy also then travelled back to Gallifrey and was the one to tell Rassilon that the Doctor did indeed know about the hybrid. She then had numerous interactions with the likes of Unit, the Eleven, the Eighth Doctor and the Time Lords before Missy was eventually captured and sentenced to death. The Doctor was the one chosen to execute this sentence, however he sabotaged the machine and discovered that Missy wasn't in fact dead, but only unconscious. This was when the Doctor vowed to guard Missy's body within the vault for a thousand years. Missy stayed within the vault throughout the monk's invasion of Earth, but did plead with the Doctor that after all this time she indeed did regret everything she'd done in the past, so the Doctor decided to give her the opportunity to prove herself. And he did this on the Mondasian colony ship, where as we previously mentioned, Missy did assist the Doctor until she encountered her previous self. She was torn throughout, not wanting to side with either the Doctor or the Master, before assassinating her previous body, and then in turn being struck with what seemingly was a fatal strike from the Master's laser screwdriver. This seemed to be the end of the Master's 19th incarnation. At some point following this, Missy regenerated back into a male version of the Master once more. And in his new body, this Master seemed to throw any redemption which Missy had gained out of the window, going further than perhaps any Master had before. He hacked into the Matrix on Gallifrey and learnt the truth about the Timeless Child. And after discovering the truth, the Master decided to destroy Gallifrey, killing all the Time Lords and leaving the Citadel in ruins. He then found a species called the Kasavin, and he constructed a plan to turn the human race into hard drives. He killed an MI6 agent and used his body, referring to himself as O. At some point before this, the Master had came into contact with a previous version of the Doctor, befriending them at some stage, before hiding out in Australia in his TARDIS. Once he'd came into contact with the Doctor again, he joined them at Daniel Barton's party before chasing down Barton and just managing to aboard his private plane. This caused the Master to slip up and inevitably reveal himself to the Doctor and her companions. He detonated a bomb within the cockpit and left them to die. When finding out that the Doctor had survived, he chased her down and followed her to Paris in 1943, where he posed as a German officer. Here he met the Doctor at the top of the Eiffel Tower, where he revealed not only his plan, but that Gallifrey had been destroyed and that the Doctor had to visit. His plans eventually fell apart and he was revealed to be a double agent and was therefore arrested, as the Doctor stole his TARDIS and returned home. This forced the Master to live throughout the entire 20th century before finally encountering the Doctor again in 2020. Upon his return, he was exposed to the Kasavin as a traitor and was therefore trapped in their reality. We don't know how the Master escaped their reality, but he somehow found his way back to Gallifrey, and he emerged from the boundary to confront the Doctor and Ryan. He took the Doctor back to the ruins of Gallifrey, revealing all of the secrets which he'd discovered in the Matrix. He then trapped the Doctor in a paralysis field and aborted the Cyber Carrier, where he offered the Siberium an alliance, putting together the knowledge of the Cybermen and the Time Lords, creating the Cyber Masters. His reign of terror though only lasted for a short period because Koshamas then decided to detonate the death particle 
in his final moments. It does seem that the Master and the Cybermasters do seemingly escape at the very end, just before detonation. As he has done time and time again, the body-stealing escape artist will be back at some point in the future, surviving to create another illustrious plan to kill the Doctor and destroy the universe. Since the early days, the Master has grown an unmatched envy towards the Doctor, which over time has become an obsession. Not an obsession to destroy the universe, but more so an obsession to escape the Doctor's shadow. Until the Master is confident that he has finally outshone the Doctor, he will not stop in his relentless effort for self-acceptance. Every time he appears to be trapped, lost, or even dead, he somehow manages to escape or steal a TARDIS and somehow live on. Who knows when we will see the Master next, but what we can be sure of 100% is his story will continue to live on and on and on. So then guys, that is the story of the Master, taking as much information from as many different sources as we could. Of course, there will be tiny little parts of the Master's life which we may have missed or not covered in full, but that is the story of the Master and I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, do hit that like button and subscribe to this channel for much more cool Doctor Who content to come. Like I say, this is the first episode in this brand new series of the story of, so hit the bell to be notified as well so you do not miss a single upload and most importantly comment below your thoughts on this video and what your thoughts are on the story of the master what i'm going to do is stick a poll at the top of this video so you guys can vote on what you want me to document next whether it's the story of the daleks the cybermen rassilon gallifrey it's completely up to you post loads of suggestions in the comments section below and i will get to work on that but until next time, my voice really, really hurts and I'm very, very tired. So that is going to be it for me for today. If you want to stay updated on everything The Who Addicts, though, you can find more cool stuff on our website, including articles on Big Finish, books, among much more, as well as links to all of our social medias, being Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you've enjoyed this video and would like to support the channel, you can donate to us on Patreon, where you receive early access to videos, a link to our exclusive Discord server, among many other cool benefits. But until next time guys, thank you very much for listening, I'll see you in the next one.